Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I have with me the HIS IceQ version of the AMD Radeon HD 7950 video card. I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this card. I'm also going to be doing some benchmarks and I also have two of them so I can do benchmarks with Crossfire X. So let's start off with some specifications off of the retail box. It has the customized IceQ cooler on this card. This is a custom design card so uh, they're saying here that it will run 12 degrees Celsius cooler on average and 8 decibels quieter on average than your typical reference designed Radeon HD 7950. Uh, there's also some other features of course. Uh, you get PCI Express 3.0 compatibility with the uh, 7000 series of Radeon video cards. You also get a 3 gigabyte GDDR5 frame buffer uh, that runs at 12 uh, 1250 megahertz effective memory clock speed gives you 5.0 gigabits per second of memory bandwidth and it uh, operates on a 384 bit memory interface. You also get support for 4K and 2K uh, Quad HD uh, high definition outputs via the um, HDMI and DisplayPort outputs on the back. Of course, HDMI support. A uh, little bit more information here on the back. So again, cooler and quieter stuff. There's a close-up here of the actual heat pipe design uh, on the cooler itself, which I'll give you a closer look at in a second. Uh, they have a black, what's called a black hole impeller, and again, uh, we're going to we're going to be looking at that directly. But it's it's a pretty unique and also effective cooling solution they've integrated with this video card. They also give you dynamic phase control for your power delivery on the video card. They've used full solid state capacitors and solid state chokes to ensure that you have high quality components, especially if you're going to go, be going uh, into overclocking with this card, which is an option. I did not test it, but uh, given the amount of thermal headroom you have with the temperatures I saw, definitely overclocking is a good option for this card. Here's another list of all the features of the card if you want to take a look at all those. Uh, Ifinity support, you can actually push up to four displays from the single video card. And then, of course, all this stuff down here, like HDMI, OpenGL 4.2, SM5, PCIe 3.0, 7.1 audio, HDMI DVI, and two mini display ports. Next up, we have inside the box. Of course, important stuff here, such as accessories and stuff. Uh, you, of course, get some appropriate foam packaging. We have the video card itself, which is right there. Again, we're going to come right back to that after we go over the accessories, which are down here at the bottom. Aha! We have a HIS driver and installation guide right there. Just a little pouch, which opens up. Ah, there's your drivers and installation disc. It's usually best to download the latest drivers off of the uh, AMD or the HIS website. You also get a graphics card installation guide right there. And it looks like they've also given you an HIS power-up uh, case sticker there if you want to put that on a computer case. Also in here we have a little bit of information about uh, taking caution if you're going to transport the card, making sure it has proper support, making sure you plug it into the PCI Express slot uh, carefully. Uh, this is a separate disc which has the iTurbo overclocking tools. I did not use these for uh, the benchmarks that I ran, uh, but they do have some pretty effective overclocking tools on this. And again, uh, as mentioned, temperatures on this card are really good, so um, definitely something to check out if you purchase the card. There is definitely some headroom on the card. Of course, overclocking is at your own risk, so bear that in mind. But uh, you can get some more performance for the same price. We also have a Crossfire Bridge. Comes right there with the card. It's a triple slot spaced uh, Crossfire Bridge, which is important because these are kind of wider cards than uh, you typically see. You also get a DVI to VGA adapter in this little baggie, which you find a lot of in these video cards, but I, I don't recommend using. And here is the IceQ HIS 7950, and uh, I'll just sort of give you a quick, quick spin around view of it from all sides. We're going to start with the basics and then to sort of go into what makes this video card unique. So here on the top you can see the custom cooler, the IceQ cooler that HIS has plopped onto the top of the video card. If you flip it over here to the back, you can see the PCB where all the components are installed. Right here is where the GPU is, it's on the other side of that uh, PCB. GPU, by the way, on this particular card runs at 800 megahertz core clock, also has 1,792 stream processors for the 7950. Uh, up here at the top is the PCI Express slot, and that is PCIe 3.0 compatible. Backwards compatible, of course, with PCIe Gen 2 or 2.1, uh, so if you are running a slightly older motherboard, don't worry, it is backwards compatible. 
And uh, Gen 3 gives you additional bandwidth, not necessarily increased performance, although it will be slightly better. Um, you're not going to suffer too much of a hit if you're not installing this to PCI Express Gen 3. Here at the back, we can see our two-slot exhaust area. Uh, bear in mind that all this, although this is two-slot, the card itself, as you can see along the back here, is actually a little bit wider. So technically speaking, this is a three-slot card. But here at the back, we can see where the primary exhaust is for the airflow coming out of the card. Also, we can see our video uh, output. So we have a dual-link DVI connector right there. Uh, in the middle here, we have an HDMI. And again, that's 1.4, so it does support those higher resolutions. And then we have two display port, uh, actually mini display port 1.2 outs. Here's a look at the uh, required power connectors for this video card. You need two six-pin PCI Express power connectors and uh, HIS is recommending a 500 watt minimum power supply for a single one of these cards uh, for a complete computer system. Uh, now while I'm here, uh, I, I, it's a good time to point out sort of the unique design of this card. So as you can see, there's a gap right there above the uh, power connectors, above most of the actual power delivery hardware, which is right under here, delivering power to the GPU. So this cooler, and this is the black hole impeller part of the cooler actually sits a fair distance over the top of the card and that's actually very useful for several reasons. This is a blower style fan so it spins rotationally like that and just pushes air out uh, in 360 degrees all around it. Uh, speaking of which it's also a 57 millimeter blower style fan. Now most of these fans that you'll see installed on video cards only can access air from one side so it's actually pulling air from right here spitting it out in all directions. Uh, this particular design on this card allows the fan to pull in air from both the uh, underneath area as well as the top right here. So it solves a few different problems when you're talking uh, about how a computer works, especially if you're going to be running a couple of these cards in SLI. Uh, one of those is that it actually just gives it more airflow in general, access to air from both sides. Another thing is that this cooler is actually entirely enclosed around the, around the fan. So what it's going to do is it's going to create some positive pressure all around this side, and then actually most of that airflow is going to be directed this way across the uh, actual heat sinks above the actual um, where you can see the heat pipes going in right there so you can see there's a fairly sizable heat sink in there with the heat pipes connected to it so there's uh, going to be a cold plate that actually sits right on top of the uh, GPU under there these heat pipes are going to come out and de uh, deliver more of that heat to uh, disperse it throughout the heat sink and then that black hole impeller uh, blower fan is actually going to push a lot of that air across it, eject a lot of it out of the back of the case. Speaking of the heat pipes, I, as you can see there's four of them in total. Uh, you can sort of see the, another one tucked away right there. Uh, they are The smaller ones here are six millimeter, the larger ones are eight millimeter. Uh, they're nickel plated heat pipes and those have been doing a great job getting the heat wicked away from the GPU and uh, spread out to the uh, heat sinks in, in most cases uh, to disperse it out of the case. Uh, now, as I've been mentioning, this card's cooler has been very effective in my testing that I've done so far. In fact, um, when I've been running just a single one of these cards, the hottest I was able to get the card in any of my tests was um, 59 degrees Celsius, which is very cool for a higher-end video card like this, especially running, I, I was running uh, benchmarks at 1920 by 1080 as well as 2560 by 1600. Uh, when I added a second card in Crossfire, the hottest that the upper card got in the system was 63 degrees Celsius, so the card that was getting more load um, on it got up to 63, so only 5 degrees more with the second card added, and I believe that's uh, due to both the effectiveness of the cooler as well as this sort of unique blower style fan setup that they have down here, uh, which is allowing it to get plenty of fresh air and uh, move that across the heat sink. A couple more things physically with the card I want to show you before we get to the benchmarks. Uh, one is a quick measurement. So um, officially the card's length is 11.61 inches. However, being measured from the bracket here, we can see that the uh, cooler itself sticks out. Uh, it's somewhere between 11 and 11 a quarter inches measured from the bracket again. Uh, so, but give it at least 11 and a half inches within your case to make sure you have enough room for the card. Uh, also wanted to point out that if you look at it from the top here, you'll notice that where the bracket terminates right here on the left side, uh, you actually have a bit of heat sink, or I'm sorry, heat, heat pipe height sticking off the top there as well. So um, this is not going to be anything close to an official measurement, but uh, you'll get some idea there as I pop that back in there. We got a, a good inch, maybe a little bit over an inch of height 
uh, on the heat pipes as well, sticking off the top of the video card. That being said, if you flip it around this way, you can see sort of the view that you will get from the side if it's installed in, your, in most cases. And then one other thing that I uh, neglected to point out before is that um, with a lot of heavier heat sinks like this, custom heat sinks from manufacturers, uh, you can tend to get when the, when the card's actually sitting in the socket a bit of sag down on this end of the card because it's just a heavy heat sink weighing down on that PCB. So what HIS has done to uh, sort of alleviate this is they have this retention bracket right here. So this is bolted directly to the PCI bracket. So it's going to be really sturdy right there where it actually physically attaches to the case. And uh, this sort of uh, retention arm uh, extends all the way around the entire edge of the card over to this side and even continues all the way around over here by the uh, power delivery. So that should give a lot more sturdiness to the card, especially if it's sitting in the bracket over time. Um, and that should just, generally speaking, prevent some of that sag that sometimes occurs from heavier heat sinks. Well, since these cards are sort of uh, midway between a two slot and a three slot card, I did want to give you guys a little bit better idea of how it will actually look when it's installed to a motherboard. So this motherboard uh, could be set up with either triple slot or quadruple slot spacing. Um, so for our purposes here, I just wanted to show, for example, if you look down here, there's a PCI slot, and uh, you probably cannot fit uh, a card into this PCI slot. So that is the third slot um, that is going to be covered up a little bit. Um, however, what you do get, even though you're, uh, you are losing that third slot, is you get some additional spacing. So if, for example, you have a motherboard with triple slot spacing, uh, you can install both video cards just like that. Uh, it does give a fair amount of extra space in between here as compared to some other of the uh, three slot cards that I have seen. And then also if we flip around to this side, uh, one of the big benefits you'll notice here is that there's still a fair amount of clearance on either side of the, the black hole impeller uh, cooling solution there. And what that's going to do is allow plenty of fresh air to be drawn in by the card to be passed over the heat sinks. Now, one other real quick thing I wanted to point out um, again, this is triple slot spacing, and I was talking about the uh, crossfire bridge that comes with the card. This actually can be set up for quad slot spacing. So if you don't have a motherboard that has triple slot spacing, like this motherboard, if it's got um, a lower PCI express slot, like right there, you can actually set this up um, to be quad slot spacing. You'll still have enough space to put your crossfire bridge across them like that, and then that would give plenty of space for airflow between both of the cards. So next up, we're going to move on to benchmarks. Here's a look at our test bed specifications. We ran it on an X79 platform with a 3960X processor, so we had full PCI Express Gen 3 support. Ran five different benchmark tests, and I ran each one at 1920 by 1080 as well as 2560 by 1600. Then we also tested single and dual card Crossfire X configurations. Pay close attention to the temperatures because they stayed very, very low. So there you have it folks, our benchmarks for the HIS Radeon HD 7950 in uh, single and crossfire configurations. And say what you will about the Ice Q cooler that they've designed for this, but HIS uh, was thinking outside the box and they created a very effective and also quiet cooler for um, all of their Ice Q cards. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the HIS Ice QX AMD Radeon HD 7950 video card. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.